So I lived in Miami a long time, and I worked here for a long time. I taught uh, strategy to the creatives as well, but I came to Crispin, or I came to Miami because I came to Crispin Porter when Crispin had like 50 people working there, and um, that's how I got started in advertising, and um, worked on some amazing things. When you have small budgets, you need big ideas, and then a lot of energy to, to get them out there without TV, without a lot of budget, and that's what Crispin's sort of founding was. After I was worn out, which doesn't take long when you're there, um, I went out to Widen and Kennedy and became a permalancer, and that was in 2000, and that's when I met Kim. And we worked on the High Life Man. I don't know if any of you guys saw that classic advertising for High Life, but it's worth looking at, up on YouTube because it was fantastic stuff. And also, just once again, I learned that there are huge ideas out there um, that are built by amazingly creative and talented people. So I was at Widen permalancing for about a year and then off and on doing things with Nike. I know that you met Saga last year, or last week. Um, I know she made you work pretty hard. She's had a great time, so she says to say hola to all of you. <laughs> um, so after uh, the year at Widen, I kind of went back and did my freelance stuff, and Kim went on with her life, and I'm going to pass the baton to her, and she'll tell you where she went after widen and what she learned there hi um, so widen um, was amazing for the fact that we were able to uh, really focus on taking big ideas and making them relevant to culture but um, I kind of felt that I had learned everything I was going to learn about kind of big campaigns um, and there was a little place literally around the corner from widen called Zeba design and it was a product development and innovation Firm. And I thought, well, that's interesting because we spent all this time kind of shouting about products and kind of making promises about a product. But sometimes when you use the actual product, there's a disconnect between that experience with the product and kind of what the advertising promised. And when that happens, it, you lose, the consumer loses trust. And I thought, well, this could be good to kind of understand this world of innovation and product design. So I went around the corner and literally kind of knocked on the door and got an interview with the, the founder of the firm and freelanced there for a while and then joined as uh, the director of client strategy and relations. And it was interesting because some of the, the, um, <clears throat> the brands that we were working on at, at Zeba, brands like Procter & Gamble, Wyden would be working on the same brand, like literally like blocks away, they'd be doing their deal with the marketing people and going out and doing ethnographic research and you know, but kind of working on their path and we'd be over on our path doing ethnographic research and working with the product development people and kind of both working against the same consumer profiles and I would be talking to Jen because we remain close friends after Wyden and think, this is weird, we should be working together like we're right in the same neighborhood in Portland and we're both really good firms and but no one at the client seemed to really be invested in talent kind of bringing these two worlds together and the more I experienced kind of what experience strategy is the more I really understood that it's almost like the biggest platform the greatest playground if you will that you can have for building a, a brand from